So the purpose of today's video is a continuation of uh, the video that I posted earlier, part one. So this is part two of working through the instrument um, panel uh, or the combination meter is what Subaru sort of terms. And this is a uh, combination meter that um, I extracted uh, previously. Um, this is my spare. This is the one that I practiced on. Um, and I've used this, installed this in my working car, um, and it works flawlessly. And it came down to being a couple of resistors um, that needed to be, um, there's two in the tachometer, and there's one in the speedometer that need to be um, replaced. And I'll show those to you very shortly. So this video will be um, to try and show you the process that you need to go through um, to restore your tachometer and speedometer to a working condition so it, it works accurately. Now, um, as previously mentioned in part one, um, a bit of a shout out to uh, Jefferson Drum. He did a video on the tachometer um, and uh, explained that the two uh, speedometer and uh, tachometer is a similar process. Um, it is a little daunting when you don't actually see something done um, so the idea of this video is to help you um, go through this process with both the tachometer and the speedometer. Um, now, one of the things that I came across with the speedometer is um, I have a total of three binnacles. Um, so my original one, which has got 164,000 kilometers on it, that's the, uh, my SVX. Um, I was able to get a parts car and extract the binnacle out of that. That particular binnacle um, had 169,000 kilometers, that's the one just here. And um, uh, a while ago, I was able to obtain a brand new one, um, uh, old uh, shop stock, um, that has got one kilometer on it. So I'm um, this, this one I will keep, um, unless when someone out there really, really wants it. Um, happy to trade it for something that's um, Going to improve my lifestyle but this particular one helped me immensely because I was able to go through using a um, uh, one of these meters uh, get it out. so um, this multimeter uh, helped me immensely I was able to work out from using the multimeter what um, the resistors should have been as per the brand new one versus what the resistors were on my parts car one and my uh, fully operational one. So hopefully um, you enjoy this video um, and hopefully it makes your life a lot easier and restores your speedometer and tach tachometer to how they should be so that when you're driving down the road you've got the comfort that things are accurate. All right, let's go. Yo. So. We're continuing on from step 13 um, from yesterday, and that is to go on to a different part of the book. Now this, this one is uh, Service Manual um, Book 6, and um, what we're looking here is that the uh, combination meter, you can sort of see here, I've penciled in just a few items that I was just trying to sort of map out what was what, so I could get a bit of an understanding. So if we have a look at the instrument binnacle from behind so I'll put this here um, you can sort of see that there are three inserts now these ones you'll notice are flat whereas if we have a look at one that's being used um, I'll turn that around and put them side by side, you'll notice that these are actually have been pushed in. And that's because the, um, the plugs that are built into your dash, they fit within these sections here. Um, whereas this is not being used. And also, as you can see, these are quite shiny still, whereas these have a little bit of um, surface corrosion or um, just, yeah, they're, they're not nice and bright, bright and shiny. And that's because they've obviously sat in a shop for the best part of 25, 30 years. Um, so it's not in perfect condition, 
um, but the great thing about it is all the parts within this were uh, working and um, I know for a fact because I stuck it in my vehicle to double check just to see that the taco worked. Now um, this one here it had a broken uh, tab it was, and uh, I was able to sort of just simply super glue that back on and I was in mine my bulb had blown so I was able to steal the bulb out of this one um, to use for my park light so it just adds a little bit of um, usability of the parts that I have so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process of removing this part here there is two screws here that you need to remove um, this ribbon here folds away then there's a total of four more screws here you need to remove those followed by clipping these tabs now it's a little bit daunting at first um, but if the most important thing is as um, Jefferson said you need to remove these if you don't you will break um, some plastic clips at the back so um, let's remove those clips going through the steps to remove uh, the front fascia area, so that's this section here from this primary instrument um, binnacle or combination meter. What we need to do is remove four screws along the bottom here, here, here and here and then two screws at the top here. Now these ones here, there's these the, 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 these little clips here that you need to sort of move over the top of and I'll show you that in a moment. But let's remove these first, um, they're fairly straightforward. The magnet's not working to pull it out. I'll pull that out and see. And then these two here. So I'll take those out. Just be careful not to tear this. It's a just a light plastic film uh, that's holding that in place and as you can sort of see here it doesn't need to be too tight all it just needs to do is to compress it the screws themselves lend themselves to that design by having as you can sort of see here a, uh, a little split washer in there so as it tightens it down it creates a, a nice firm seal around that so fairly straightforward now, this here, I use plastic so I don't damage any of the resist, the contact area. And as you can sort of see here, we're pulling that away. Just carefully. So that is now free. Um, the next part is, there's two ways to do this. Um, I actually like to take off uh, the the clear plastic around the outside and the reason why I like to do that is it gives me a chance to clean it but as Jefferson said you don't actually need to do that um, so I'm just going to in fact this one it's proving me wrong it's going to come away it looks like pretty easily but see how this gets caught just there just make sure that that is free and where is it caught there's that screw these ones here so I'm pressing the black ones that's these ones here I'm just pressing that in and there's one on this side there we go so there you go that's that panel that's come away now what I was saying before 
if we just move this out of the way it's these here is what the screw goes through into now if you don't remove these and then you try and pry these off you will break these parts here so in this case I've um, got that out without having to do that but you can then separate the two as you can see here see they they separate pretty easily and it's just these extra little clips at the top here um, once you've popped those that will then come clear and that gives you the opportunity um, you know after 25 30 years these are going to be a bit dusty and dirty so it just just helps you um, bring it back to normal and uh, like new again okay so let's have a look at the combination meter itself um, so if we simply rotate the combination meter to the back side so here we have this one here is the tachometer this one here is the speedometer um, this one here is the fuel and this is the temperature gauge now you'll notice one little challenge that I have with this is that the uh, the reset here sits very proud and you can't actually take this off so what we're going to do is we're going to work on the speedometer first um, and show you through that process now the sp speedometer has four screws the tachometer has three now these screws uh, are a different length um, between the two so don't confuse them my advice is to just do one at a time um, and just take your time uh, repairing this so let's take these out now I'm going to put my finger just on the other side to brace it because it's just these four screws that's holding the two components together and all the electrical um, impulses that feed the um, speedometer actually go down through these screws so once again don't rush this take your time um, and uh, try not to damage any of their ribbons on the board so let's take that out it's got two little clips one there and there just holding that in place um, you can just turn it outside down and there we have it so as you can see here it's just those four you can see the two illumination bulbs in the background um, you can stand that up now just for example what I'll do is I'll remove one screw from the tachometer just to show you the difference between them and why it's important so you can see the one for the tachometer even though at the same level is significantly longer so yeah don't muck it up And that and we'll put this aside not too tight just enough to get some compression from that spring okay so let's put that aside for the moment and let's have a look at the speedometer now 
The speedometer has, um, now this is one style. Now, uh, very shortly, I'll, I'll just expand these, um, but the design of the two is slightly different and I'll, I'll pull out the other one in a minute and I'll show you. But you can see here, this particular resistor here is the one that we need to uh, replace. And um, in this case, for this particular unit, you can see there's a bit of scoring around here. So I cleaned that up with firstly some uh, electronic cleaning solvent. That's the one I used here. Um, it's that alcohol, I've forgotten what they call it. Uh, but it's this one's specifically designed for cleaning electrical services and doesn't leave a residue. That's the crucial part. So I cleaned this off. Um, then I used a, um, uh, a solder um, that I've got over here to heat those up. I used a solder remover. It's just like a little vacuum thing um, to suck out the old solder and then removed this particular unit. So... Um, what I'll do is I'll show you very shortly the, the, the two, but in one unit, that is the resistor that you need to, um, to replace. Now, one of the crucial things, and, and Jefferson brought it to the attention, is when you remove it, there's like a silver side or a line side. This sort of indicates, I guess, positive and, and negative sides. I'm not too sure exactly, but it's the flow. Remember that maybe even draw on the, uh, the, the motherboard with a, a Nikko pen or a permanent marker pen so you can see which side that line is. You need to keep, in this case, the line from this one is on that side, so it's on the lower side of the uh, speedometer. And um, yeah, so I went through uh, with my multimeter and checked all the different. Um, connections to make sure that following the circuits they all uh, there was a circuit and um, um, everything sort of worked I then went through all the resistors and I used my brand new uh, combination meter as just a, an example of finding out whether the the amounts were uh, within the tolerances of um, uh, what I thought the tolerances of what should be about the right amount so Let's compare this one with the other one, and I'll just... So now I've removed the unit from uh, the unused one. I think the important part is to note that these circuit boards here differ uh, between the two. So. This one here is the same circuit board that I have in my March 92 variant. And you'll notice, if you look in here, you'll see there is a resistor just here. Um, and these are the two terminals. As opposed to the other unit, and you'll notice that the part number is not 3.4, it's 3.3. You'll notice that this one here had a little bit of burning around here and the resistor which I replaced, that one, it went in here. Now that's this unit as you can see and there's that gold in this case rather than silver for the other one and it faces that way so that's really important that you get that direction in there and on this one you can sort of see we kind of look there's that silver there that has to face that way so it would have come out on that angle so the crucial part is noting the differences between these two you'll notice that the location of the resistor that you need to replace is here or is down in there. Now, as I'll show you in my um, little short video, removing this one here 
is re relatively easy. The hard part is actually getting that, which as you can see is significantly higher than that one, um, in there. So I had to sort of bend it a little bit. But hopefully that gives you a, an idea of sort of what's necessary. Now, where I used the, uh, the unit for just checking to make sure that there was um, the right amount of uh, flow is I, I would just simply go through and make sure that you know if you've got this connector here it's very hard to do while it's in the air there and then this one I know that that is working just fine so I then went through and tested all well, each one of these um, capacitors or resistors or, or whatever they might be. I'm not an, I'm not an auto electrician. Um, I even tried to find out what the color combination of that meant. Um, some of you are far smarter than me and I yes, I did find a website that allowed you to put it in but I couldn't find that exact one. Um, to try and find out what the uh, ohms should be. So what I did is I used the one that hasn't been used as a benchmark and then simply would go through each of them. So for example, um, this one here, this blue one, I found at, if we set it to um, 200 ohms and then went through, it's 25 thereabouts. I got 24.2 and when I tested mine which is identical to this I got almost the same number so I did that for all of them and it's interesting because this resistor here and this resistor here look identical um, but at um, 20 million ohms I got around about point So as you can see here, it's one point, it's two thereabouts, 1.92. But the one over here, which is different, as you can see, it's significantly different, even though they look the same. So I used that process to try and figure out what these are here. So that one there is similar to this one here and this one back here I'm expecting that's climbing which is similar to this one so that's two and this one will climb so I was able to now I'm not an electrician so I don't know exactly how to do this but it's the best I could do, the best that I could figure out, to try and figure out which one of these correlated. And then I was able to ascertain that it was this one here that I needed, besides the fact that the board was slightly burnt, suggesting that it was failed. So let's go through the next part, and that is um, removing, soldering, and then testing. So let's do it. Okay, you can see that there's the two resistors. The one on the right, the smaller one, is the one that's out of the circuit. The one on the left is um, the one that I've replaced it with. Um, as you can see, it's significantly larger. So as a challenge, getting it in there is a stretch, but I've managed to push it through. And as you can see here, I'm now ready for soldering that, that in. Okay, so now I've put it in a position ready for soldering. I've tried to have it as nice and flat as possible. And what I'll do is I'll, using the soldering iron, 
I'll um, it's hard to do this with the camera. I'll heat up. Where is that focus? I'll heat up this wire uh, first, and then touch the solder, and it it should sort of just fall into that little space. And I've angled the wires in the same sort of direction that they were previously, um, and that gives it that nice sort of teardrop shape. Well, that's what's happened in the past for me. So we'll see how we go. Here we have it. I've soldered here and here um, using that method where I've just simply um, heated up the wire first and then touched the soldering wire uh, to the wire that's being soldered in and it just seems to work pretty well. So now it's a matter of clip, clipping these these off here so I try and do that as, as close as I possibly can to that so I'll, I'll clip those off just like that and um, that way it'll fit nice and neat. Okay so I've clipped those off. Uh, you'll notice when I was using the soldering iron I accidentally just touched that connector there so what I'll do is I'll put a bit more solder on that uh, just to tidy it up and it melted it down a little bit so hopefully resoldering that it'll probably help it a little bit. And there you go so that's the, the one there in the middle um, that was just I just touched with the soldering iron so it melted it down so I've just tidied that up so hopefully that all works okay so we've connected the battery this is the instrument cluster all the lights work test one the Tachometer works. Good result. Test two in a minute. We'll take it out on the street and test to see that the speedometer now works. Okay, test number two. Let's see how the speedometer goes. And as you can see, the taco is working just fine. And voila, we have a working speedometer. So coming up to 40. Per hour. This is just a little private road. It's going to be a fairly short video, but we'll just give it a little burst here. Okay, we're all done. Uh, thank you very much for watching part two of uh, two-part uh, process. Uh, part one was obviously removing the instrument uh, gauges from uh, the, uh, the dash itself. And as you can sort of see in that process, don't need a lot of tools. You just simply need uh, a trim removal tool, uh, one of those plastic ones that's ideal. You know, take off a couple of areas to minimize damage to the plastic areas. Uh, a 10 mil, um, uh, for one bolt behind the dash, uh, a 12 mil for two bolts holding the steering column, a 10 mil just to loosen off and remove the uh, negative on the battery for the to isolate any current. That's important. Make sure you do that. And um, then a uh, a small Phillips head screwdriver, and everything can come out. It's nice and easy. And then when you take the instrument gauge out, it's also nice and straightforward. Um, few clips, uh, four screws at the bottom, two screws at the top, uh, the instrument cluster or the combination gauge as Subaru likes to call it comes apart. Um, then there's the four screws for the speedo. I'd ask you to watch Jefferson Drum's uh, excellent video on the tachometer. He gives you all the details about uh, what ohms and uh, voltage that the, the resistor needs to be. Um, I believe it's the resistor, if it's a capacitor. Or apologize I'm not an auto electrician so feel free to comment if you want um, it's done so now that you can see the video shows that whole process it's very easy to do if you take your time if something's not quite going to plan stop think and then act on it rather than just try and sort of push or break or twist 
Um, these are very fragile cars, so I'd ask you to try and take your time and go through that process. Uh, I didn't need a lot of tools uh, for the actual soldering side. I needed a, a soldering iron. Uh, my eyes aren't the best, so I bought a magnifying glass with a light in it. That made it much easier to, to go through the circuit board. Um, through Jefferson, I saw the, the little uh, solder sucker. That works a treat, pulls the solder away. Um, and then, obviously, putting the resistors in, um, just take your time. Use the wire of the resistor, heat that first, then place the soldering wire on top of it to touch that. It'll then basically, I don't know how it works, through induction or whatever, it pulls the solder material into that little hole and it creates a nice little teardrop. So feel free to practice on um, something else before you tackle your 30 year old car. Um, I went in all in and gave it a go. So hopefully you can too. And I hope that this helps the SVX community and uh, for those that own or are assisting those that own uh, the SVXs. So thank you. And if you like this video, please click like. And uh, if you really want to watch more, hit subscribe. And if I can see that there's a big demand for this, I'll, I'll work on some of the other parts from the SVX. Um, it's a bit of a passion and I'm happy to share. So thank you.